Hello and welcome to the CF for Blender Material Editor Overview. My name is Patrick Nieborg and I'm going to show you the changes and improvements made to the CF for Blender Material Editor interface. Let's get started by opening the cube scene provided with this tutorial. It's a very simple scene with three UV unwrapped cubes on a simple plane illuminated by Thea Physical Sky System. Make sure you have Thea as your main render engine selected and verify that the render output path is set correctly. Save the scene and we are ready to begin. When no materials are assigned to an object, the Thea plugin will automatically assign a basic material to them. You can also convert Blender materials to Thea basic materials by selecting the materials you wish to convert and press the B2T button, located at the Material Editor panel. If you want to convert all materials in your scene to Thea materials at once, you can do this by selecting all objects in the scene and press the Enable Basic Component button. Thea materials are different from Blender materials, and so the conversion will only translate basic components like diffuse and reflectance color or texture, and roughness value. Depending on how the Blender material are set up, more components may be converted correctly. The Enable Basic Component button can be useful when you import OBJ or other file formats that have textures associated with the materials, but again, the success of the conversion will depend on how Blender import those files. Let's have a closer look at the Material Editor. Under the Material Preview image, we can find the first Thea material, which is the Quoting material. By enabling it, we add a quoting to our material. It's the first material because when used, it's always on top of any other material we have added. On the next tab, we can see the material list and layer weight values. Here we'll see all the materials that are being used and also their order in the layer stack. Lower number means higher position in the layer stack. If two materials have the same layer number, then they get mixed together depending on the layer weight values. Next, we find the material tab where we select our materials. We can do that by clicking on the drop down button and select a material from the list. We have several material types at our dispose. The basic material can be used for most common materials like plastics, leather, wood, concrete, fabric, stones, metals, or translucent materials like grass, leaves, and many more. The glossy material is best used for accurate metals, glass, and liquids, where it can make use of measured spectral reflectance data. The subsurface scattering material can be used for all kinds of materials that show a subsurface scattering behavior, ranking from smoke and fog to orange juice, milk and marble. The thin film material is idle for thin glass objects like windows. It can also be used whenever an interference color effect is needed, like seen on soup bubbles or quoted glass and metals. With this material set, we will be able to create any type of materials. On the material drop-down list, you will see that basic and glossy material appear two times, having one of them the number 2 in the name. This is because with Thea we can layer materials one on top of another, which happen frequently in reality. Just think about painted metal or varnished wood, where we have two different types of materials, one on top of another. We will see how this works. Let's add another material and see how the material get added to the material list. By default, both list numbers have the same value, which means that they will get mixed together. Let's give each material a different diffuse color. We do this by selecting the desired material from the drop-down list and changing its diffuse color. If we open now the Thea Material Editor, we will see how the materials get layered together when both list numbers have the same value. Let's close the Thea Material Editor and delete the created material link. Now increase the list number of one of the material and open the Thea Material Editor again. We can see how the material are now layered one on top of the other. The material with the lower number will be always on top of the material that has a bigger number. Close the Thea Material Editor and delete the link. The next settings will affect the material as a whole. These are Clip Map, Emitter, Displacement and Medium settings. You enable them by clicking on the checkbox next to them. Then we have the Blender Strand setting, where we can set the root and tip width of Blender Strand's object. And the last tab is for opening the Thea Material Editor, where we can make further adjustments to our materials if needed, or load and save created materials, including those we have created with the Thea for Blender Material Editor. If we load a material from the Thea Material Editor, 
we will see that all the tabs of the Thea for Blender Material Editor have disappeared and this is because we are now linking a Thea material to our object. This is a fast and easy way for assigning materials from the Thea material library to our objects inside Blender. We can delete the link anytime by clicking the Delete Link button and this way we return back to the Thea for Blender material editor in case we don't want to link a material. To finalize the Thea for Blender material editor overview, we are going to recreate the material from the Layered Material tutorial. If you haven't seen this tutorial yet, you can find it at the Thea webpage under the Tutorial section. To follow along, you will need the folder called Formaps that you have downloaded with this tutorial. There you will find the needed bitmaps we are going to use. Let's start by adding the glossy material which will be our metal and add the color bitmap to the reflectance channel. Set the extinction coefficient to 6. This way we increase the reflection of our material to a metal reflection. Now we are going to add a bitmap to the roughness channel. Locate the roughness bitmap and set the roughness value to 100. We are also going to add a bump map texture to the bump map channel. Set the bump map value to 50. If we want to make changes to our textures, we can go to the texture panel and there we have additional options like tone mapping and texture offset among others. We are finished with the metal part. Let's add a plastic on top. We do this by adding a basic material to our glossy material and we set the order number of the glossy material to 1, so that the basic material order number is 0 and on top of the glossy material. We are going to repeat the exact same steps like we did with the glossy material and add the bitmap textures to the same channels, except that we use the color bitmap on the diffuse channel and leave extinction coefficient at 0, because plastics don't have a metallic reflection. To finalize the material, we have to use a mask to separate the glossy material, which is our metal, from the basic material, which is our plastic. We do this by adding the mask bitmap to the layer weight of the basic material, the one that is on top in the layer stack. Instead of searching for the same bitmaps, we can also copy and paste bitmaps by using the shortcut Ctrl C for copy and Ctrl V for paste. If we want to delete a texture, we can do this by right clicking on the texture slot and use Unset. With these simple steps, we have finalized the creation of the layered material using the Thea for Blender material editor. And with this, we have also reached the end of this tutorial. My name is Patrick Nieborg, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.